Queensland and South Australia have today announced they're swinging open their doors to Melburnians these school holidays. But Victorian health authorities are warning they won't hesitate to make Sydney a red zone if the Bondi outbreak continues to grow. Sydney recorded 12 new infections today, prompting the government to extend indoor mask rules. His Premier, Gladys Berejiklian. All of those cases bar two are in isolation. There is no doubt um, an increased level of concern given the additional number of cases because all but one case is linked to an existing case. That gives us a degree of confidence that what we've asked people to do you know, matches the risk that's there at the moment. The New South Wales Government will be extending the existing mask wearing provisions for an additional week. But we'll also be extending it to all of Greater Sydney. If we suddenly get a number of unlinked cases and if we suddenly get them outside of the geographic region that they're kind of concentrated in, that will obviously adjust the health advice. For her views on the New South Wales growing COVID cluster and borders, let's hear now from epidemiologist and WHO advisor, Professor Mary Louise McClaws. Always great to see you. Thank you for your time, Mary Louise. Victoria is often criticised for shutting down when we have an outbreak. Is New, New South Wales handling this the right way? Well, the two outbreaks, Michael, are very different. Uh, in Victoria, you didn't really have a choice. You went from three cases to, I think it was 10, then 12. So by the time you got to 12, uh, it was only three days, uh, you know, when you got to 25 cases. Uh, so it really, there wasn't any choice. You had to do a lockdown, even for a short period of time. And this one has been coming in Sydney in small dribs and drabs. However, today is an enormous uh, peak. And what really matters about this peak is that apparently they're all close contacts rather than primary contacts of the case uh, of the driver. And if that is correct, then we're doing the right thing. However, if some of them have still been the primary contacts of the driver, then there still is the potential for further cases because they may have been put in isolation, but a bit too late. Uh, do you think you'll go into lockdown in Sydney? Well, uh, if, if it continues this way, and most cases have already been in isolation, then we may not need to go into lockdown. Uh, but uh, if it appears that we've got primary cases that are popping up are in very remote areas, then I think a, at least a three-day stay-at-home order is really required to provide, um, you know, the uh, the authorities time to do more contact tracing. And it's been raining, so the results from wastewater won't be so good. Uh, they're often very unreliable in the rain. Uh, so, and of course, a lot of people haven't been going out for testing either. So I think it's in the next couple of days is going to be a knife edge about whether or not we should go into a three, at least a three day stay at home order. For once we have better weather and better news. We had no new cases again today. Do you think we're getting to the point where we can finally fully reopen here in Victoria? I think you're getting very close, absolutely. And now, from an outbreak management perspective, you need to have twice an average incubation period. But uh, this is uh, particularly different because uh, you did ring fencing in the South Bank. Uh, that seemed to be incredibly successful. Uh, and so you probably can uh, lift those restrictions sooner than an outbreak manager would want. So I think that's great news. Mary Louise McClaws, thank you very much for your time. Always great to see you. Stay safe.